consider the reflection in a line L in R2. So here we have the line L, and suppose it goes through the origin. Then the parametric description of the line is the vector x is t times the vector u, which is u is the direction vector of this line, and assume that u is a normalized vector such that its length is 1. Okay, now we line L, and we can choose the line, calculate the line, perpendicular, orthogonal to L. Now consider a vector x. The vector x is can be decomposed in, 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 in two ways. Well, x is composed of a vector that is parallel to L, or actually the vector x parallel, which is on L, and a vector on the orthogonal part. Now consider for this vector the reflection in L. Well, this is just mirroring x in the blue line. So here we see the reflection of x in L. And we see actually that this is no more than the vector x minus the vector x perpendicular, yeah, the orthogonal part of x on L. So the parallel part here is no more than the projection of x on L. And the orthogonal part is actually x minus its projection on L. So if we look at this formula, then we get 1 times the projection, and here minus 1, minus 1 the projection, so we get 2 times the projection of x on L minus the vector of L. So we know that the projection on a line has a projection matrix. So suppose this one is given by P, then we get as a formula 2px minus the identity times x, which is just x, is 2p minus the identity matrix times x. Now recall that the projection matrix is given for the projection on a vector u is given by 1 over the uh, u1 squared plus u2 squared. On the diagonal we find the squared parts back, u1 squared, u2 squared, and on the anti-diagonal we get u1, u2. So since we assume that the length of u is 1, then we can simply leave out this scalar before it, so we get a matrix u1 squared, u1, 2, u1, u2, u2 squared. And we see that actually t is a linear transformation. So reflection in a line is a linear transformation with a matrix. The matrix 2p minus identity matrix R. So we usually write S for reflections. A reflection matrix is 2p minus I2, which is 2 times this part here, 2 times p. So we get 2 times u1 squared. 2 times u1, u2, 2u1, u2, 2u2 squared minus, well, on a diagonal, we write 1 for the identity matrix, but u1 plus u2 equals 1, so this is similar. Why we do that is because of the following fact, that now we may write the matrix as u1, u2 squared, 2 times u1, u2, 2 times u1, u2, u2 squared minus u1 squared. 
So in fact, if you look carefully, then if this is written as a constant a, we find here minus a. And on the entire diagonal, we find the same element b back. So in particular, if we look at a squared plus b squared, then we get u1 squared minus u2 squared, because this is a over here. Yeah, u1 squared minus u2 squared times u1 squared minus u2 squared plus b squared equaling 4 times u1 squared u2 squared. So if we work this out, we get u1 to the power 4 plus 2 times u1 u2 squared those square parts, plus u2 to the power 4, which is actually the same as u1 squared plus u2 squared to the power 2. And u1 squared plus u2 squared equals 1. So this gives 1. So the typical format of a reflection matrix is that it can be written as such. For uh, certain uh, constants a and b, such that a squared plus b squared equals 1. Now look at the transformation, which is a reflection in a plane. So here we have a, a plane v given in a general formulation, so ax times by plus c z equals 0. Now choose a unit normal vector. Yeah, a unit normal vector, how do we get this? Well, as a normal, we would uh, uh, choose, of course, A, B, C, the vector with coordinates A, B, C, and now we normalize it by dividing it by its length. So the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So if we draw the normal, the normal vector for this plane, We get a picture like this. So here we have a vector u of length 1. And let's suppose now that we have a vector x pointing out of the plane v in general then we may project x on the plane yeah we receive, we get this vector which is a projection of x on v and how do we calculate the projection of x on v well we'll look at that soon so if we choose a projection and look on the other side of the plane, then we get a reflection of x in the plane v. And here the white vector is simply the projection of x on the plane v. Look at the projection of the vector x on the normal, on the normal, so the projection of v on the normal, which is the green vector here. Then we calculate the projection of x on v by simply subtracting this vector from the vector x. So we walk from x opposed direction to the plane, then we get a projection of x on v. So, we may conclude that the reflection of x on v, in v, is simply the vector x, and we subtract one times, we get the projection of x in v, 
two times the projection of x on u gives us the reflection of x in v. So the reflection of x in v is simply the vector x minus two times the projection of x on the normal u. Now here you see the two green arrows which are, are just the vectors x projected on u in opposite direction. So we see, we again we write x as the identity matrix times x minus 2p, because we know that the projection of x on a vector in R3 can be represented by a projection matrix. So we get here, we get I3 minus 2p times x. So actually we see that the reflection in a plane is also a linear transformation. And the matrix corresponding to this linear transformation is the 3 times 3 identity matrix minus 2 times the projection matrix corresponding with the projection of x, the vector x, on the normal of the given plane. So this gives us a matrix S. Yeah, we can write it more in detail. S equals I3 minus 2P. Equals 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 which is the identity matrix in R3, minus the projection, two times the projection matrix, a projection on a vector u, which has unit length, so that gives us on a diagonal u1 squared times 2, u2 squared times 2, u3 times u3 squared times 2, and on the other elements we get the respective cross products of ui, uj, times 2.